Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Firefly Station M2 Geek Computer. Now this is a super small form factor ARM based mini PC that's capable of running Ubuntu, Android and Firefly's own Station OS. But at the time of making this, we do have Android installed and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Now, when it comes to these ARM based mini PCs that run Android, one thing I always look for is Google Play support, and this actually supports it. On the back of the packaging of the M2, you will get a device ID, and you can actually register this so it will work with Google Play. But Google Play is already pre installed. Just keep in mind you do have to register the device. Now, this mini PC is constructed of aluminum, and the case itself acts as a heatsink for this CPU. Along with the M2, we're also going to get a 2 amp 5 volt power supply. I believe that's what we have here. And yep, two amps at five volts, plus our USB Type-C power cable. Now the USB Type-C port on the M2 supports power in and OTG. Firefly will be offering a few different variants of this PC, up to eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. But the one I have here has four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of internal eMMC storage. We also have the option to add a micro SD card and an M.2 NVMe SSD. As for external I.O., over here on this side, we have a USB 3.0 port, USB 2.0 port, an IR receiver, and our power slash reset button. Moving around to the opposite side, we have USB Type-C for power in and OTG, a full-size HDMI port, gigabit Ethernet, and a 3.5mm audio jack. On each of the other sides, there's not much going on here, but like I mentioned, this is a full aluminum enclosure, and this acts as a heatsink for the board itself. As for the specs, for the CPU, we have the RK3566. This is a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G52 2EE. This will support up to OpenGL ES3.2 and Vulkan 1.1 right out of the box. You can get this in a couple different storage variants. I have 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 GB of built-in eMMC storage. But this also supports a micro SD card, and you can add an M.2 NVMe SSD, but it needs to be the 2242 style cards. Gigabit Ethernet, AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and this will run Android 11, Ubuntu 18.04, and Firefly's own Station OS. But this already came pre installed with the latest version of Android 11, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. As soon as they get some bugs worked out with the Ubuntu and the Station OS build, I will do another video. I'm really eager to test out Station OS on this thing. Alright, so here we are. This is running Android 11. Everything's been really smooth so far. I've actually had a good experience with the RK3566 and Android in the past. Uh, especially with 1080p and 4K video playback. With this one here, we do have access to Google Play. Like I mentioned, you will have to register the device, but we do have full access once that's all done, so you don't have to use a third-party app store or anything like that, which is a big plus for these single-board computers. In my opinion, if you're going to run Android on something, I think you should have the Google Play Store because there's a lot of stuff that needs Google Play services to run, especially games and things like that. We'll head over to Ida64 real quick. As you can see, we have that RK3566, 4 cores, 1.8 gigahertz, the Mali G52 GPU, and Android 11 with a security patch from April 5th, 2021. So the very first thing I always like to do with these little boards here is run some benchmarks. And with this one here, I was able to do Geekbench and 3D Mark. With Antutu, for some reason, even with the light version, it won't run the GPU benchmark, so it's really not a valid score. Here's Geekbench 5. It's not looking great on the single or multi. For single, we got 150, multi 476. And with all of these boxes that have tested with the RK3566, they've all scored really low with this. Next on the list, 3D Mark Slingshot, which tests OpenGL performance of the built in Mali GPU, 862. And finally, Wildlife, a Vulcan GPU benchmark, 296. Moving over to some 4K video playback, we're going to start out with streaming here from YouTube. We'll go with this Hisense video. We make sure we're sitting at 4K here. We'll go full screen with it. I hate this new setup. So 4K, 60. Got a little stuttering at the beginning, but it does catch right up. The RK3566 has done a really impressive job at 1080p and 4K60 playback and all of the little devices that I've tested with it so far. Usually when we get a new chip, we have to wait a little while to get good 4K playback, but right out of the box, this has been doing streaming and native playback really, really well.
So we just covered 4K streaming. Let's check out some native playback from the internal eMMC. This is a higher bitrate 4K MP4 running at 60 FPS. And it's looking great. Unfortunately, I have no way to measure it right here with the built-in video player. And they do recommend using the built-in Rockchip video player that comes pre-installed. But just by the looks of it, it's definitely keeping up. I've tested this video on a lot of different devices and we're getting great performance here. Moving over to some native Android gaming. First up, we have Stardew Valley. We're starting off light here. This is an easier one to run, and as you can see, it's running great. You can use a controller with this game, and I have an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Next up, you know I had to try out Minecraft. We're at 12 chunks, and overall it's really not that bad. I would probably recommend turning this down to 8 chunks and maybe fancy graphics off. I did turn clouds off, but uh, we do get some hiccups every once in a while at 12 chunks. Here's Asphalt 9, and this is one that's going to struggle a bit on this little board here. Uh, it's just not great performance, and I do have the graphics set to performance, so we should be running a little better than this if we had more power out of that GPU. And the final game I wanted to test here was PUBG Mobile. It's definitely not perfect, but I'm still really surprised that we're able to start this game up and run it like you see here. It's really cumbersome playing this on a single board computer or an Android box with a mouse and keyboard. I wouldn't go out and buy one of these specifically for it, but it's really cool seeing it run on this little thing. Moving over to some emulation. First up, we have Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. I'm at the lowest resolution in the emulator itself. This is Crazy Taxi 2. FPS is listed in the top left hand corner. And as you can see, it's running it pretty well. Every once in a while, we do get some hiccups, but overall, it's not that bad for what we're working with here. Next on the list, we have N64. I'm using the standalone version of Moopin 64 Plus FZ, running Diddy Kong Racing, and this one here is playable. Again, I'm using that Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And finally, we have PSP. I consider this one, Tekken 6, a mid-range game to run. No frame skip, no hacks, we're at 2x resolution, and it's running it fine. I also tested Chains of Olympus, but without frame skip, it's just not going to run it well. You can run it with frame skip on at 30, but trying to unlock that, it's just not going to work out. So before we wrap this video up, the last thing I wanted to test was a little bit of cloud streaming. We're going to be using xCloud. This is one of my favorites. I've also tested GeForce Now with Fortnite and it worked great. So I expect this to work just as well. We'll go with GTA 5, give it a second to load up, and then we'll hop right into some gameplay. So when it comes to game streaming, you definitely want to be connected over Ethernet. I've plugged in my Ethernet cable to the Gigabit Ethernet built into this little box here, and it seems to be working just as well as it does on anything else. Unfortunately, the Android version of xCloud only does 720p right now, and hopefully in the near future they do upgrade this because it does make a big difference going from 720p to 1080, but it's handling it just fine over Ethernet, and if you wanted to do something like GeForce Now, Stadia, or even xCloud like you're seeing here, it's going to work just fine on the Station M2. So overall, not bad performance for its tiny form factor. When the RK3566 was originally announced, I was really hoping that would be on par with something like the S922X or even the RK3399, but that's really not the case. This is more to compete with the S905X3 and the X4, and they're neck and neck in the benchmarks, but the S905 X3 and X4 have been on the market for a little while, so Android is a bit cleaner on that platform. But in the future, this will get a little bit better. Like I mentioned, I was hoping that we'd have something to compete with like the S922X, but that's just not the case with the RK3566. So definitely stay tuned to the channel because I will have a couple more videos coming up on this board. We're going to test out Ubuntu and I'm really excited to test out their Station OS on this little thing. 
I just felt like waiting a little while until they got some bugs ironed out. And as you can hear it in my voice, I'm a little under the weather. And since this already came pre-installed with Android 11 and Google Play, I figured we'd go ahead and test this first. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little thing, I'll leave links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.